Good morning and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on YouTube. Live commenters here are just flying in, people from all over the world. If you're not watching this live, if you're watching this recorded, do try to watch live. It's so much fun. We have so many people commenting on here. It's just, it's just an awesome, awesome thing. So uh, two topics for today. Let's start off with kind of finishing yesterday's conversation. Yesterday's conversation, I mean, we'll link to it right here. Yesterday's conversation was about um, electronic versus mechanical shutter. There are reports that on the Lumix camera specifically, that the uh, in electronic shutter, you are only shooting in 10 bit, but in mechanical shutter, you're shooting 12 bit. Turns out that was a pre GX8 issue as of the GX8 cameras from the GX8 forward support that. Now, someone in comments told me that the G85 and the GX85, both of which were released after the GX8, also had 10 bit electronic shutter. I was told by Panasonic, everything GX8 and forward has both the uh, has 12 bit on both. So maybe there's some misinformation out there. I tried to get a straight answer for you guys this morning, but I didn't get one back. So um, I was told, like I said, GX8 and forward. I was not given a list of model numbers. So I made the assumption that those cameras were all released after that. But uh, so they would have 12 bit on both electronic and mechanical. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the commenter is wrong. Do not know, trying to get to the bottom of it. But GX8 and GH5, absolutely 100% 12 bit on both mechanical and electronic shutter. So there's that. Also on yesterday's video, when I was, someone had asked what's the advantage or why even shoot mechanical shutter, um, it, it, you know, other than the, um, uh, the scan lines problem where you get the, the banding of things moving too quickly, um, why even bother shooting mechanical? Is there any advantage to shooting mechanical? And I knew there was one and for some stupid reason, I just, my brain was like, no, I'm not going to tell you what it is right now. But commenters, several commenters pointed it out to me. I'm going, oh yeah, that little thing. It's banding from light. So if you're working with any kind of fluorescent lights, um, CFL type lights, lights that flicker, actually maybe CFL stuff, whatever, the lights that flicker. And you've all seen them, you know, overhead fluorescents that are going bad and they get a really noticeable flicker. But even when they're good, they are still flickering. They're flickering at a frequency that matches the electrical power. Um, so in the US, they're free, uh, flickering at 60 Hertz. And that will show up as banding in the photo. You see it in video all the time. If you're trying to shoot video under that type of lighting, you'll see it. But if you're shooting electronic shutter still photography, you'll see it as well because it's basically, it's a frame of video. That's essentially what it's capturing there. So, um, so yes, that is one of the number one reasons, uh, one of the main reasons to not shoot electronic shutter all the time. Honestly, I, I, I am pretty much always shooting mechanical shutter. I, now that the cameras have the auto mode, I just leave it in auto and it switches as it needs to. Um, and that's, I guess that's a perfectly good reason to do it. And the good thing about digital is you can always look at the picture and see if you're getting it. Now, if you're in an environment, um, Thomas Emmerich had posted a comment about how in, uh, he was shooting a, what did he say? It was a concert or he was shooting something that was under this fluorescent lighting and he wanted to shoot in um, electronic shutter for the noise issue, right? This is one of the great advantages of electronic shutter. It's silent. So you shoot electronic shutter, you're not disturbing whatever it is. So if you're shooting a wedding, oh, it's a best thing for shooting weddings. He was shooting some musical, some kind of musical event. He didn't want to make the noise, but he was getting those bandings in there. And he noticed that as he changed shutter speed, he was able to increase or decrease, reduce, enhance, I guess, the amount of banding he was getting. Um, what I, and, and yes, that's, that is going to happen when you're in electronic shutter because it's, it's the same thing in uh, video as you increase or decrease the shutter speed or the shutter angle. If you're looking at it that way, then you can increase or decrease that banding. Now, one of the things that you can do in shooting video, but this doesn't apply to shooting stills, unfortunately, as far as I know, and I don't have the GH5 here to test this with. Um, it's a GH5 or GH4 thing. You have a, what is it, scan line? What is it called? Um, I forget the, the phrase, the, what it's called in the camera, but you can adjust the shutter angle very, very minutely so that you can compensate for the rolling shutter that you get with electronic, uh, that you get with the lights, they're flickering at a frequency that is interfering with the camera. Same thing if you're pointing at a TV screen or um, at an LCD display, those are flickering on and off and you can adjust that very, very, very finely and you can get it so that it doesn't flicker. But that's in video, you can't do that, I don't think, in the stills mode. So anyway, so that's one of the other disadvantages of it. Okay. Um, now we're going to move on to this other discussion about this, uh, e um, what is it called? The uh, Cinema 5D article that broke yesterday that was really slagging on the GH5 in a not nice way. And we're going to respond to that. But let me take a quick look at the comments here before we do and see if there's anything else in here. Um, Harsh 
Love your show. Thank you. First time live. Awesome. Glad to see you here. Kyle has pre-ordered your GH5. That's fantastic. Um, getting emails saying it's shipping on 4.4, and that's good. All right, April 4th coming up. Um, Sully saying EOSHD's response to the article is hilarious. And that's what we're going to talk about. And let's see here. Any other f- watching from San Lucia? Caribbean Islands. That is so cool. Uh, synchro scan. That's the word. Thank you, Cobblesticks. That is the word exactly that I was looking for for the changing the, the frequency of the um, electronic shutter. Okay. So Cinema 5D article broke yesterday about the 5HD calling it basically crap. <laughs> yeah, thanks guys. Uh, saying that the 10-bit must not really be 10-bit. Uh, skin tones look like rubbish and so on and so on. And it, it's it's a damning article because you look at it, they've got these close-ups and it seems like this is kind of legit. And not, you know, I don't like that technical level of the bit depths and compression and color grading is a bit beyond my scope. That's I, I get a lot of it, but it's not my world. So I don't read that and go, this is wrong. I just read that and went, well, this doesn't sound good. Um, hopefully Panasonic's going to address these things or you know, figure out what's going on here. Um, so a couple of problems. First off, one of the big things is to really truly see the benefit of of an eight of a 10 bit image, you gotta be looking at a 10 bit display and most people aren't. So there's just that, let's just kind of push that out of the way. And I know that for the demo stuff that Panasonic's been doing with the 10 bit, they're using 10 bit, uh, whatever LED or LCD, whatever big TVs are these days, big you know, plasma TVs, um, they're getting 10 bit ones in cause you kind of need the 10 bit display to see the benefits of 10 bit. Okay, there's just that out there. But then EOS HD, bless them, did a really nice follow up article. And let me just switch over to the screen here so you can see the two articles. So on the left here, we've got the Cinema 5D article. Let's zoom out on that. Oh, I guess that was right. Um, Cinema 5D article here. It's over here. How good is the Panasonic GH5? Lab review reveals 10-bit flaws in V-Log. Um, okay. And then the EOS HD article. We'll put links to these in the show notes. But also, if you just Google Cinema 5D GH5 or EOS HD GH5, you're going to find these articles. So the Cinema 5D one. Um, this is great. I love the headline. Slates, the Panasonic GH5 calls Vlog and 10-bit unusable, but they're wrong. <laughs> Wonderful. Love it. So he goes in here to describe how they're basically using Vlog incorrectly. They are color grading it way beyond where it should be color graded to, to show that uh, the artifacts. And one of the biggest problems that they've got in there is that they are... Um, uh, hold on, sorry. Let me scroll down in here. That they are not taking into account the compression, the MPEG-4 compression that's happening. So the files are not recorded uncompressed onto the micro SD card or the SD card, obviously, right? You couldn't do that. And they're also not recorded in ProRes. They're recorded in MPEG-4. And the compression, so that is a lot of compression that's happening in there. Um, It's 150 megabit right now, and that is going to increase to 400 megabit. So a lot less compression happening. But a lot of the, the artifacting and the banding that they're seeing in these tests are due to compression, not to the fact that it's, there's something wrong with 10-bit. The 10-bit data is there, this is really compressed. And when they're putting it into a V-log, they're compressing it even further. And you're looking at skin tones, which are very, very close to each other as you run across the face, and they're looking for artifacts in there. And then they're comparing it to these cameras that cost like 10 times as much, which is kind of ridiculous as well. Point is that their, tent, their test is flawed. And if you read the EOS HD article, it explains why, and it explains how to not have these problems, it explains why it is still very, very good. And um, it points out that with the compression, this is why you have the HDMI out. If you need that much higher level quality, you've got HDMI out, so you can do 422 10-bit on the HDMI out into an external recorder like a, a, a Atomos Ninja Assassin or Shogun, and you can capture that straight to ProRes. So read both articles. I think there's lots of good information in there. If you're in the market for GH5 or you're buying one and one article concerned you, the other one should set your mind at ease. Clearly, this is still being looked at. Um, I mean, I you know, I don't know, I'm not at Panasonic right now, but I would imagine that they're looking at this and really verifying that the problems that um, Cinema 5D has reported were fallacies on their issue, on their side, and not any problems with the codex. And if there are problems in the camera, then obviously they're gonna fix it. There's still time to um, get the shipping firmware updated. And of course, uh, well, I, maybe not, who knows, maybe this firmware is already being written in and put, they're putting these things in boxes, but firmware updates are not only scheduled, but are obviously gonna come out. And if they find a flaw, they'll fix it. It's the beauty of having software in these cameras, you can just update the software to fix a problem, just like on your computer. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of uh, concern into it. It seems like the tests were not really properly done. And if EOS HD, which is a really phenomenal site and they definitely know their stuff, if they're saying it's golden, then I'm good with that. Um, I would like to say I'll do all my own tests for you, but A, 
I'm not going to get into that because I know as soon as I, as soon as I start doing that, everybody and their mother is going to tell me that I did it wrong. So I'm not even going to go there. Um, and second, I don't have a GH5 again yet. Um, there was some confusion apparently, and I still don't have a GH5 back in my hand. So I'm hoping I'm going to get one tomorrow, but it's not looking good. So maybe next week sometime we'll have one. Um, so that's that. Okay, reading back into the comments here. Let's see what else has been flying by. Watching from Jamaica, watching from Italy. So fantastic. Uh, can't wait to order my GH5. Had my GH4 on a tripod the other day. Oh, this doesn't sound good. And the tripod fell and broke the lens mount. <sighs> okay, story for you. Here's a story for you. This goes, but that same thing happened to me. I was 14 years old. I'm going to go with 14. Maybe 15. Young, obviously. Nikon N2020. The, my first Nikon. My dad had bought me a Yashica FX3 when I was seven years old. My dad was shooting contacts, cameras, um, and the Yashica and the contacts shared the mount. So I got a, a Yashica camera, common lens mount so I could use dad's lenses. And I was shooting, obviously, film. This would be in the you know, late 70s. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. Um, and uh, and I had this camera. It's great. And then eventually, though, you know, I wanted I wanted Nikon. My dad had you know his stories. He used to shoot Nikon. All his gear got stolen. When he replaced it, he bought this contact stuff. Regretted it. Wished that he had bought Nikon. So when I was started saving my money from my own cameras, my dad says buy Nikon. So I bought a Nikon N twenty twenty. It's the first autofocus camera in the world. First Nikon autofocus for sure. Maybe maybe Canon already had one, but it was Nikon's first autofocus. And um, and that was my camera. And you know, oh my God, I'm like 15 years old. You know how long it took me to save enough money to buy that thing? You know, my paper out and after school job and all that. Anyway, saved the money, bought the camera, had a long lens on it, uh, probably 70 to 200 or something like that equivalent. I was going to shoot fireworks. We're at my family friend's house on the lake. I got the camera set up on a tripod to shoot fireworks. And I've got a long cable release, a long electronic cable release. And it's plugged into the camera and you're doing this and where you're going to put this end. And I put the end in my pocket. And you know what happened next, don't you? So at some point after fiddling with the camera, I walk away. And as I'm walking away, I realize this is a bad idea. And I spin around and the act of spinning around was enough to pull that cable, pull the camera, and the whole thing just went <whistles> boom. And it landed right on the lens and just mm, bent, bent the lens this way. Oh, tragic. Nikon was able to fix it. They were able to fix it. Um, don't remember what that cost me, but they were able to fix it. I think my dad bought me a new lens out of pity, if I remember right. But uh, yeah, tripods, man, they're great, but they're not infallible. You got to watch out for those things. They can, they can kill you. All right, there's my tragic story for the day. Um, all right, a quick, a quick scan through the comments again, then we're going to get out of here. Pre-order date of 20th of March from, uh, from the UK. Excellent. Greetings from Taiwan. Fabulous. Um, EOS HD for the win. There you go, Mass921. Sean Mark Nipper watching in, watching from San Francisco. Oh, that's why you weren't at the event last night. And let's see here. This is more than a great video camera. Cannot wait to get in-depth stills review for those waiting for the GX9 to come out, which that's not an announced camera, if anybody's wondering. It's just an assumption of that would follow the GX8. Uh, but knowing Panasonic will be like the GX3.5 because num numbers are meant to confuse you. Uh, I will be doing a lot more with stills when I get the GH5 back again. I know I really focused on video on the first round of tests, but I, I will do a lot more stills. Don't worry about it. Uh, I just saw this incredibly cheap airfare to Iceland from San Francisco. And I'm I'm like, I got to look and figure out when I'm going to get it. Maybe I'm going to go. Maybe I'll go because I've never been and that would be fun to shoot. Maybe we'll go for a long weekend or something. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Vlog makes camera operators lazy. Well, there you go. <laughs> and I agree. This is couple sticks of saying, I agree with EOS HD on the Cinema 5D article. Good. He did come up with a flawed theory of his own regarding shooting in 4K, 8-bit 420, then downscaling it to 1080 would make it 10-bit 422 image. Uh, is that what they said? That's bizarre. Okay. Best to thoroughly test and read up about this rather than just post ill-educated quote-unquote results. And it's worth pointing out that that EOS H5, uh, Cinema 5D article was, again, with pre-production hardware. So you can't... It's pre-production. It's not finished. Hold off on the, on the results. And this is also why, one of the reasons why we're not posting original footage. People keep asking me to post the raw footage from my test so we can see it up close. No. Number one, I don't want to pay for hosting because I'd have to. And um, no. <laughs> Number two, it's pre-production. It's not fair to Panasonic. It, Panasonic probably would tell me not to if I asked. I'm not even going to ask because it's not fair to release pre-production footage like that that's completely unedited, just totally raw for people to see because what will happen is someone will download it and then they will go, this camera sucks, just like this Cinema 5D article. And um, 
And uh, that will be the result that lives on in infamy, right? Because they just said it sucked because they were looking at something that wasn't done yet. You don't do that. You don't take a cake out of the oven 10 minutes before it's ready, take a bite out of it and go, this cake sucks. Yeah, really, it wasn't done yet. So that's my that's my logic there. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow. What am I doing tomorrow? Um, I want to do a, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this tomorrow or not, but I want to do, I did a really simple headshot for someone the other day that came out really nice. So it's just the lighting and there's one light. Um, and the grading of it in Lightroom, just, mm, I, it's, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. And I still got the setup, so I think we'll do a like a live, I'll get someone to stand in. Ryan, you might be up for this. Um, I'll get someone to stand in and pose, we'll do a picture, I'll just share the process. Because it was really nice, it came out really good. Okay, that's it, I'm out of here. See you guys later, bye-bye. <laughs>